Thank you, Giuseppe, and thank you all for the teaching of this planner. It was gorgeous. So, as Giuseppe told you, I'm the coordinator of the Barcelona City Branding Project and also today the coordinator of this webinar with my colleague Mark Sanz from Barcelona Activa. I thank you for your endurance to be still here. For the last 10 minutes of this webinar, I will try to synthesize the fundamental ideas of what we have learned today. So let's get to it with the conclusions. Mario Rubet, City Promotion Director, opened the webinar and he gave the floor to Oriola Amat, Dean of the UPF Barcelona School of Management. Oriola Amat, as an economist, talked about the good position of Barcelona and Catalonia in attracting investment in the technological field. Oriol also highlighted the relevance of Barcelona University's ecosystem in the world, with examples such as the UPF and the Barcelona School of Management, positioned according to the ranking as one of the most powerful universities in the world. Later, Jaume Colboni, first Deputy Major of Barcelona City Council, he gave us some bullet points about the Barcelona measures to tackle the COVID-19 outbreak and to put our city back in track to economic recovery. How did we do it? Uh, a country strategy from the government of Spain, a fast mobilization of resources, adaptation of municipal finances, the Barcelona deal with more than 200 stakeholders, global alliances, and the public-private Barcelona Partners Investment Agency. In short, our main goal for a rapid recovery is to reactivate the st and strengthen the Barcelona economy and to create jobs, jobs, and jobs. As a keynote speaker, we had the inspiring presentation of Professor Ray Clark, a global city consultant, and as you may have seen, a great connoisseur of Barcelona. Greg pointed out the need of brand cities more than, uh, to brand cities more than one only city. It is less important that one city wins in a competition with another than it is that we garnered global support and investment in all cities. COVID-19, as an accelerator of trends, big themes have emerged such as business models are changing rapidly, link between planet health and people health are arousing exponentially, which means that for the climate change and global prosperity, successful cities are essential. New kinds of community, new ways to solve problems as society. Changes in mobility as well with consequences of building and transports in the city and the need for agility, new agility to reconfigure itself for the post-pandemic reality. All this leads to new models of blended city between the physical and the digital city. I love this sentence, face-to-face -face versus face-to-space activity. Greg's proposition for the city branding strategy of the, of the cities is to distill the uniqueness of the city in order to promote uh, to sense of belonging, the uniqueness and the DNA of the city. In short, progressive cities should be pioneers explaining how they work, innovating on environment towards zero carbon cities, being mediators, mediators, I am a mediator, as global agenda setters, leaders uh, to build trust with citizens and planners for future shocks. After some interesting Q&A, we opened the first panel of the webinar called Managing the Global Crisis, Local, um, Good Local Practices in Response to COVID-19. The panel was moderated by Mikel Molina, a journalist and deputy major of La Vanguardia. Mikel has posed in context that first thematic panel explaining us about the needs of cities to solve the health crisis before any promotional strategy. In this panel, we had the pleasure Pleasure to hear about the case of Lisbon from Diogo Ivo Cruz, the project manager of Invest Lisboa. As Dr. Leonel from Paris Science Po says, I love this idea that Portugal is regarded again as the star pupil of Europe in the way the country and the city of Lisbon tackle with this crisis. Popul Portugal is the third safest country in the world. You're explaining us about the current situation of the health crisis in, in Lisbon. There has been no pressure in hospital, only 1,600 deaths among 46,000 infected, so strong economic impact of tourism, government providing liquidity to companies, a wide range of measures at Lisbon. Diogo pointed us about the importance of big events to help positioning the city and doing so to show that what the city can offer and innovation and quality of life in the case of Lisbon. So we had Tom uh, Miskin from 
Oslo business region. And we know that Norway is another country to stand out. It is the 16th country in number affected by the virus with a death toll of only 253 people with a lower population density and not a tradition of hugs and kisses as we do in the south of Europe and Mikel Molina pointed out. We had Tom Miskin and he gave us a brief introduction on the overall response and status from Oslo amid uh, COVID-19. The excellent figures of contagion of Oslo and Norway in general gave place uh, cities like Oslo in an outstanding position as safe destination for economic recovery. The communication was a key issue between the government and citizens and social distances have been appropriate as well. Things are starting to work in the new normal in Oslo. He is explaining us, explaining us about the Oslo Innovation Week, a unique tech and startup event, including 70 events and 550 local and international partners every last week of September. And mostly uh, the difficult decision to take between canceling it or going digital this time. As technological advanced society, they decided to go 100% digital and probably reaching high, higher audiences. He also talked about hybrid type events during the innovation week as a new trend maybe. After some new interesting Q and A's where people ask about cultural events, um, he said that he's taking shorter time in Oslo to go back to cultural activities with 50% capacity in culture and a small audiences in football. In Lisbon, Diego said football is not open yet, but both local and national governments are very concerned with it and are helping the cultural sector to cope with it as with the tourism sector. And that was it with the final one. Then we opened the second panel of the webinar called City Alliances as Successful Responses to the Crisis with public, sorry, public and Private Collaboration, moderated by Nicole Kalimba, Professor of Marketing and Branding at the UPF Barcelona School of Managing. And Nicole introduced the speakers of the second panel. Rose Wagen Jones, Executive Director of Marketing at London Partners, was the first one to open it, and she shared the case of the City of London mostly to explain us about the London Citywide Alliance on the hospitality, culture, leisure, and tourism sectors. Those are 50, sorry, 20% of the workforce of London, which means one, one out of five people. These sectors are at the heart of what makes London DNA. So as an example, they uh, are working on a shift from visit London into virtual London experiences. Rose's highlights were very interesting. She called, she told us about the recovery. She told us the recovery will not be linear. We need to be flexible. We need to think different in promoting cities, collaboration at the heart of the response and big problems require big responses with public private collaboration. London and Partners, the International Trade Investment Promotion Agency, has spearheaded a new white campaign under the banner of uh, Because I'm a Londoner to join Londoners as, unique, as a united community committed to helping uh, renew the city. Rose shared with us how the idea came about, the challenges of building a public-private sector response and the early results of the campaign. Lots of uh, uh, challenges to face and a sentence I like very much what she said is that she was, we are flying the plane while we are building it. And that's a sensation I pretty much understand that we're all having in this new era we are facing. So the second speaker of this panel was Ms. Sharon Landes Fisher, the CEO of uh, Tel Aviv Global. And uh, as for the end of June, Israel has recorded 23,000 cases of the coronavirus with only 317 deaths. Sharon told us about Tel Aviv and the size of Tel Aviv is as Manhattan, so we can get the idea of the, uh, the size of this city. So, and 33% of young population uh, of the city between 18 and 35 years old, that makes it a, a brilliant city with uh, uh, thousands of cultural events, which means that it is a non-stop city with the highest number of startups per capita in the world. So the DNA is uh, of Tel Aviv is of innovative minds. When the COVID arrives in March, uh, uh, this last March, they had three weeks of full lockdown and after gradually lift the restriction as Barcelona, they are forced to go back to restrictions last month. 
Um, so she, we asked her what they have done to start the recovery, and she explained us about the, how they gathered all the stakeholders together, digitally and public and private agents, from tourism, culture, and this industry to restart tourism activity. They come up with a domestic tourism campaign with a message sharing the same problems and trying to bring back prosperity to everyone. Um, free visits, for instance, and tour were a key issue offered to local citizens. She highlighted also the importance of tech sector, uh, the economical, financial, and socially successful in industry for Tel Aviv. And uh, as they, they explained, this is a part of their DNA because uh, Israel is used to go in and out of external impacts and urgent situations. And for that reason, they are used to react in a very agile manner to tackle this new crisis. After some very interesting Q&A, Sharon commented on the changes they are going through. I like the, what uh, she said, that we all can feel the same, that suddenly we must go do things differently and very quickly, when previously there were so many rules that made it so slow. This is an example of new positive shifts, cutting the red tape, she said. So we opened the last panel of the webinar called this uh, city branding research, new trends and how to deal with the new reality post COVID-19, moderated by Professor Josep Fernandez Cavia, Associate Professor in the Department of Communication of Pompeo Fabra, and also a member of the International Place Branding Association. So Josep introduced the theme of the third panel and the four speakers. The first one, Hong Fan from the University of Beijing po pointed out that strategic planning and communication plan is needed in this crisis. We must focus on unique attractiveness of places and community engagement and the importance of social media to com communicate local values. Magdalena Florek from the University of Economics of Prozen in Poland, uh, economic and business, sorry, she told us about the priorities of this new situation health, common goods and public values, domestic tourism, appreciate local values and local citizens have, as potential ambassadors of our city brand, and the importance to focus on values, experiences and relations before the volume of tourism coming. Michalis uh, Kavaratis, professor of marketing at the University of Leicester, he highlighted the main points as strengths in city branding. First, the movement to bring place branding closer to people, involving and listening to stakeholders. Second, the need to rethink the relationship between place branding and communication. It's not about promoting, but about the essence of communication, including listening and not only speaking. And third, the collaborative, strat collaborative strategy for a common purpose as a new city branding trend. Ownership and sustainability for what matters to most local citizens. Robert Gorvis, last but not least, the International Independent Consultant. He is the president also of the International Praise Banding Association. And he talked about the opportunity with this crisis to test radical innovation another, that otherwise wouldn't have happened in years. Actually, Tel Aviv already told, about, told us about it. And this seminar is an excellent example of these changing times. Robert also told about brands uh, as the essence of what we will become in the future and the importance of community building, belonging, and DNA of the cities. And then we had a very rich and interesting debate about the values of the city, the trends of tourism, and the sense of city branding to return to basic, highlighting the DNA of every city. Join us, the speakers, how can brands help city in the difficult times? And it was very interesting to have John Hang answer talking about Wuhan Chinese city as an example, because as all the cities, but they were the first ones, they suffered a lot with the virus and they showed the values and the sense of belonging and the community says, sense to face the impact. So Wuhan spirit is seen by so many people as the city of heroes. And that was uh, an important value that we will, that will remain after all this crisis. So she pointed out the importance of governance effectiveness to tackle the crisis as also very important needed. And so the importance of the value that can be shared in society. Mihailis talked about 
also about the importance of reforms is the, the sense of community and represent the values of the city. And this is more important than ever. When Joseph asked the speakers about the, if they dare to anticipate changes in tourism or if things are going to be back to previous uh, strategies, uh, Robert was asking, what is it tourism about? We want to visit other places, we want to meet new people, and this is human nature, and this will not change. But what will change will be uh, the way, the new models of uh, dealing with uh, tourism. So, uh, we still have some uh, interesting questions. One of them was the, the reputation of United States of Brazil, and from a reputational perspective, the answer was that the crisis is not the problem in some cases, but leadership issues to solve these problems are in countries such as these two. So, and so far, today's webinar, Rethinking City Writing in the Times of COVID, we have shared local international experiences to rethink cities with outstanding best practices, collaborative initiatives, and future change. A study uh, of the United Nations advances that seven out of uh, 10 people will live in urban environment in 2050 and the future will happen in cities and their metropolitan areas. With this webinar, we wanted to open reflections around sustainable, sustainability, healthy, uh, digital and productive models to face the challenges that we have before us, that we have before us. So when I go back home today, I will remember these takeaways. COVID-19 as an accelerator of trends like teleworking of this very webinar and the digital technology to improve communication and marketing strategies for city branding. Public and private collaborative as key strategies, face-to-face -face versus face-to-space activity. The government is helping tourism sector, but governments are asking high tech sector to help others also with training and employment for the future generations cutting the red tape of previous legal restrictions, doing things different and more agile and continuing to the next stage, next stage. This is Darwinism. We need to live in more human, sustainable and hygienic and healthy human environment and tourism will value it more than ever. We have the biggest collective challenge in many decades because the success of cities will be essential for climate change and global prosperity. Brand will be about community building, sense of belonging, always back to the DNA of every city. We will always need to come together. We are all in the same race, but we will not stop pedaling. And last but not least, we are very happy with interest uh, that this seminar has aroused it and the number of attendees we have accompanied that who have accompanied us uh, from Barcelona and from many other places throughout the world, such as Prague, Florence, Amsterdam, Japan, Peru, China, blah, etc. From the Barcelona City Council and the Barcelona Activa, we sincerely thank you for the collaboration of all of the participants, speakers and moderators. I think that we are all dazzled by the quality of the professionals who have accompanied us and grateful for your generosity in sharing with us all these experiences and reflection. And to finish, we would like to make a special mention of our partners in this initiative, Pompeo Fabre University and the entire team of Barcelona School of Management. Thank you, Clara and team. And thanks, pers my personal thanks to Mark Sanz, who is on my red Right, right side, a colleague from the city promotion team with whom we have worked intensely to make this webinar possible. Warm regards from Resilient Barcelona. Thank you all for your participation and hope to see you soon in our city. Have a nice day. <laughs>